um, telecom consulting. I think I joined about the same time as Greg in uh, what 2002, um, and then uh, uh, was with Scully Mitchell for a couple years after they uh, went through, you know, a, a, I guess it was a bankruptcy. Um, I went out on my own, kind of like you guys are doing now with your own name. And uh, one of the challenges that we had was the lack of uh, tools to manage all of our clients. But my core business model and the reason TAMS was developed was focused on this concept of the contingency fee savings. Now, I know that uh, Greg and the organization have been working on E-rate for quite some time um, and that uh, the business is, is uh, kind of shifting focus or at least expanding into uh, more uh, cost savings. And I'm going to talk about the tool and how it was designed to fulfill that goal. But then it turned out that it also um, fulfilled other needs of our clients. And we found that, geez, there was a lot of information that was being captured by this tool set that could be used in other ways besides uh, contingency cost savings. And so I wanted to take the opportunity to kind of introduce the tool and um, maybe open up the, some of the doors. I had six people working for me. I sold my consulting business about two years ago. Um, the person that bought it has rebranded it uh, under his, a new name, but um, he continues to grow the business, and of course, everybody every day uses TAMS. It's um, kind of the keystone of the operations. Now, it's not the only tool in our toolbox. Um, you know, I still rely on QuickBooks and some other things. I'll show you a help desk uh, that is a web-based uh, service that our product that we also have. But um, just to uh, kind of give you a little uh, insight into TAMS and um, all of the things that it does for you. And, um, and then later, once we get the platform uh, operational, we can schedule some real hands-on training. We also have videos and things like that to um, get you up to speed on it. Now, there's a lot to this tool, and I'm only going to be able to cover you know certain uh, pieces of it to a certain level of detail in one hour. Um, but I think that at the end of the hour, you'll see uh, uh, what, what uh, the, the major pieces of it and um, maybe think about how it would uh, be best suit your needs. There may be pieces of it that are not relevant. We had users that uh, didn't do any cellular and others that only did cellular. And so you're going to see some some landline for voice and data services, and you're going to see some cellular. Um, and uh, let's see, with that, I guess I'll uh, take a breath. I tend to speak a lot, so um, don't feel feel free to interrupt me. I um, get on a roll sometimes, but I do want to, you know, take a breath. And when you hear me breathe in, go ahead and jump in with your questions. Nothing right now. Okay, great. So um, I am recording this, and I'll post it on the web for, you know, if you want to follow up on it, it'll be with our other videos. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, I'm going to uh, go, go through this uh, a, a little, little bit of the background, and that is, like I said, it started as a contingency fee savings tool. We started with, we were using spreadsheets. And uh, there are certain, um, I'm going to try to put these side by side here or, or, or overlay one screen on top of the other uh, for reference. So there's just certain basic information that you need, uh, and that is you need to know like your client inventory, whether they're, if we're speaking landlines, like, you know, what types of uh, lines they have. And lines are generic terms that I'll use. It could be POTS lines, it could be PRI or T1s, it could be SIP trunks. Um, you know, it could be hosted uh, VoIP uh, lines of service. So lots of different models of delivering uh, services are, of course, in cellular. They could be tablets with lines of service or um, uh, with data plans on them, cell phones, whatever. So just the inventory is, is one area. And, of course, some of our clients, uh, I worked with clients that had over 100 locations nationwide, U.S. and Canada. Um, and you'll see 
some of uh, just a, a little bit of this is a sample database that's about five years old, but uh, you'll see that we've scrubbed it so that uh, you'll see like Michael Jordan's name and Babe Ruth and people like that. But uh, you know, they, they, you, there can be locations all over the place in Mexico or, or US or Canada. And um, that inventory in and of itself for all of your clients, being able to go into a tool and, and select from a list of clients, now I'm only showing a very small subset of sample clients here, but um, it is um, a one-stop shop for all of the client information. So there's a lot of CRM information that's contained in here, and they all relate in one way or another to the, the services that are being sold for um, contingency cost savings or some of the others that I'll talk about. Um, within a, a given location, you know, you can drill down. It's a very hierarchical structure. I will mention that on uh, with, you know, our help files, which we hope are helpful, um, that they actually um, uh, try to mirror the real world as much as possible so that you don't have one paradigm to think of in TAMS and then a different paradigm for the real world. So just like in the real world, when you have a client, um, a client will have one or more physical locations, and those physical locations are relevant for landline services for obvious reasons because the circuits come into those buildings, but also for cellular, even though they're mobile. You, if you need to um, re send a replacement cell phone, you need a shipping address, and if you have a client with 100 locations, you'd like to know which, lo which cell phones are kind of tagged to, to a given location. So those are physical locations, and within a location, there's going to be um, of one or more serve lines of service and then uh, we'll get down it goes down even further and that is who are the services with and and what plans are they on and what's the history of those plans because really at the end of the day when you're talking about cost savings you're not managing lines of service so much or, or locations as you are the services on those lines now you might add lines or remove lines and finding lines that do not have any uh, utility to them, no value, uh, there's no usage on them, that, that's part of the cost savings and some of the analytics you'll see in uh, the analysis and the reporting that the tool gives. But uh, it's, a, it's a hierarchical structure, it's very logical. So the tool set is structured the same way. So um, if we go into um, you know, a given location, I can see the lines of service there, there's gonna be information about you know who the uh, um, what type of equipment they have there. Some of this information, like I said, is not uh, populated uh, for certain clients if we weren't engaged on a certain level with them. Other uh, locations will be completely populated with information like the interconnect um, contact information, and, and you'll notice that there are things like email addresses uh, that are available. Uh, and if I just um, take one of these, one of the productivity elements of the tool is that if you use an email client in the environment that TAMS is running in, so in your hosted environment, if you have like Outlook or something that's uh, you know enabled, if you click on an email link in TAMS, it will open up uh, your email uh, application, that's whatever your default application is, and you can have whatever logo or signature you want. Um, in some cases, it just opens up a generic email. In other cases, like if you're going to reach out to an interconnect to have them go on site and do some troubleshooting, uh, well, I don't have an email here. Um, I'll just put one in. And I can drag and drop information, uh, like contact information. We can import this from spreadsheets or whatever. But sometimes if we're sending out information to an interconnect, um, it will, pre-populate the body, which is useful if you want an interconnect to go out and do something with line two or line three or whatever. So uh, it sticks to the line inventory for that location in the body of the email. If I have hours of access populated, it'll, you know, it'll, it puts that in there, who the site contact is and so forth. So there's some productivity um, um, elements that are built throughout the tool. So sending an email to somebody, wherever you see an email address field, uh, you can just click on it and, and, and roll with your, your particular needs. Okay, 
So um, when it comes to inventory, and I'm not going to, again, try to get into the training of everything, but obviously for landlines, there's going to be things like what type of line there are. If it's a um, digital circuit ID, it will have that information because those are relevant to when you're placing orders, moving things around for the optimization, and so forth. Um, we also are very uh, in in tune to cost um, centers for cost accounting purposes. So many companies will um, have multiple divisions or departments within a physical location. Some lines will be designated, whether it be cellular or landlines, um, they can be associated to a particular department for their accounting purposes. So we can do all the cost accounting and I want you to be aware of that because you're gonna run into clients that are gonna be like, well, can you give us a report based on account or by location or by supplier? Um, so those uh, details are captured within the body of uh, the, the line details. So, you know, as we drill down from a client to a location to the line details. Um, you get more and more detail. Um, I'm just going to uh, quickly uh, give you a sense of some of the things that you might find on uh, the lines. And so and that's really a lot there. It's probably more than you want you care to see. Um, so there can be different types of uh, lines, like fire alarms that just basically have local service on them. There can be POTS lines that are used for other things like faxes or a private line for a CEO or whatever. And they uh, will have a phone service with a particular provider. And those providers may change from time to time or the plans may change from time to time. So um, we track all of those changes in order to take care of really two things. This uh, initial goal of uh, doing contingency cost savings means that we had to, first of all, know what their current costs are what we would estimate their future cost to be and what those uh, savings would be to be able to go to a client and say, hey, we think we can cut your cost 30% in the future. And then, of course, our business model was that we also build on actual savings in arrears after the billing came in. Now, since costs are a function of not just monthly recurring costs, but also usages, such as long distance or in cellular, how much data usage there is and things like that, international roaming, then you know we need to have not just the plans of the monthly recurring costs but the usages the usages are important to be able to then say well if we were to change plans or providers what would this usage pattern on these line types look like on another in another scenario so we have that ability to put in alternative scenarios take historical usage and apply it to these other plans or providers. Sometimes it's with the same provider and just a reconfiguration of the plans or the contract. So there's lots of solutions there, and uh, again, that's for another day. But then once we make those changes with the approval of the, of the uh, client, um, we wanna be able to take new usages and say, here's what you would have paid on your old plans and configurations. So we have to have this both forward and, and backward looking ability given this business model of billing on actual savings. So uh, we talked about inventory. We also need access to supplier accounts with the clients and the plan details and the contracts. The contracts might uh, provide for things like discount percentages, volume discounting, um, term commitments that you don't want to break without penalty, and so forth. So these are relevant to the job at hand. And, um, and of course, we need invoices with usage. So I'm just gonna uh, quickly uh, zip, just again, to give you a view so it's tangible, it's not just a bunch of hand waving. Um, so here's a bunch of uh, supplier accounts. Some of them may uh, no longer be active. We can mark them as active or inactive. We may consolidate carriers for a client. We may not, we may split carriers depending on the the pricing uh, options. So with our history on these lines, and again, this is synonymous for cellular, we can keep track of this line used to have local with AT&T and long distance on, on CenturyLink, and now we you know, consolidated the long distance uh, with you know, another provider. And so we can track and manage the individual services, even though the phone numbers haven't changed, 
you know, that, that they have moved from plan to plan or supplier to supplier and account to account for that matter. So if I come into this as like a master one net account with AT&T, and it can have all kinds of services on it. It can have MPLS data services, SIP trunking, um, switch long distance, you know, all, all kinds of, of services. Um, you'll notice that there are um, uh, some information like who the uh, rep is. Um, and again, there's an email I can click on. It'll say, hey, this is for this client on this account number, so yada, yada. Um, there's in information about the contractual obligations. And one of the things that we would like to have as part of our activity is to uh, request the contract information um, if we don't, if our client can't provide it to us. And so we can generate these things called form letters. And a form letter are things that are built in, they're word-based documents. The word templates are completely customizable. You can customize them with um, your own, um, uh, oh, here it is over here. Um, with your, you customize it however you want, but this would pre-populate uh, to, you know, regarding a given a client and so on and so forth. So when you're making changes, first of all, it's efficient. Second of all, if you want to make a, a change, you change your template, everybody that uses it gets that benefit of the updated template. Um, there are a lot of um, components like this in the, um, uh, in the tool set, I'll touch on a couple of them. Um, but within these uh, uh, um, supplier accounts, so an account in TAMS is just like something you get a bill for every month, one-to-one -one relationship. And then we can track all of the billing every month as they come in. So, you know, it's $9,000 and $11,000 and eleven two, you know. And so we can track every month what the, uh, what the spend level is on this given account. Now, the cost went up, but is that, what was the reason for that? It could be lots of things. Actually, uh, we took things off of other carriers and, and got much better pricing and, you know, put in, and they were growing, expanding, a lot, lots of, of, of details here under the hood, but the tool will give you and your clients that insight. And I think that's one of the values too, is that the clients will see a lot of value. We have like, I don't know, 80 or 90 reports, and some of them are for you as an analyst, uh, and others are for carriers for change requests, and some of them are for uh, the clients for their own like administrative and accounting uh, uh, insights. Okay, so um, as we were going through, and then I'll just quickly show you, there's also a supplier database that is, um, you can import plans from our online database. But one of the things that I bought into with Schooly Mitchell was that I think uh, we were told there were like 5,000 plans already populated in this database uh, when we when I started up the business, and exactly zero of them were pertinent to my clients. <laughs> so, so having this big database, um, yeah, it seemed great, but it didn't really, uh, um, you know, provide the value. So um, this is probably the one area that is um, the most uh, labor intensive of, of being able to read a bill and look at the plans and figure out what's, you know, what's a local charge look like, what's a data circuit look like, what's long distance and so forth. Um, but we have the, the ability to then put a plan into TAMS and you can see a bunch of data plans here. Um, I can filter these or sort these. Uh, but basically, when we get into um, uh, landline services, uh, we can have um, like a local, this is a, just a local service, and you'll see different types of services here on this tab. So local, obviously, is a monthly recurring charge. It sometimes has, uh, you know, UCLs, universal service fees, 911. They may or may not be metered for local calling, um, taxes, and so forth. They can also be cloned. So once you have a plan, you can clone it and say, oh, well, the, they also have a plan to cost $16.95, so you can duplicate plans very easily. But we also have plans for local toll. Uh, I'll just jump out of here real quick. Local uh, is one type. Local toll is another type, which has in-state uh, and intra-lata and intrastate intra-lata calling. 
Uh, usually they're the same. Uh, it back in, on older plans in state, um, actually in state and out of state were typically different, um, but uh, um, we can handle those different rates for um, uh, in state and out of state. And of course, international is another area. We had some clients, the larger clients that we could manage. I mean, with just a few of us, we were managing clients that had you know, hundreds of millions of dollars a year of revenue and millions of dollars a year in telecom spent. So our potential to help them reduce 20% of their costs and to share in those uh, cost savings for, you know, two or three years uh, was really amazing what we, what a few people could do with really large complex companies. So things like international calling is another area where there could be some significant cost savings. But they all have different cost data points. Calls to China are different than interstate calls or in-state calls. So I'm going to mention fidelity here in just a little bit and why fidelity is relevant to properly finding savings and then billing for those savings. Chris? Okay. Yes, go ahead. This is Kitty. Um, how do these plans get loaded into the system? Is that something that your group loads and then maintains? Yes. Okay. Uh, if we had a standard where the government could say everybody must conform to this standard, but nobody does. And so, uh, but, and that was one of the things is that we have tried for years to get anybody to say, here's how, you know, you can load plan data. But we found a, a system that was very efficient, even though it, albeit is, is uh, manual to an extent, there's some uh, capabilities that you're going to see will help you uh, be able to populate these and there's a lot of defaults too. Probably the worst part of it is figuring out taxes and of course if you have a Canadian consultant you'll love it because their taxes are so fixed and it just there's a provincial difference and that's it. Whereas I know in California, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Texas, they're all different. <laughs> so uh, even the localities are different. So uh, things like tax rates and stuff, but you, you'll, you'll, don't let that give you too much angst because you'll find that um, being able to clone a plan and change a number and apply it to a new account or a new um, client is, is really very simple. But it's a great question because that if we could solve that problem, we wouldn't need employees, right? <laughs> we would just push the easy button. Um, but uh, yeah, it's 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 a tool set, but there's still a craftsperson using that tool. Um, the, obviously, we have toll free. Uh, so toll free numbers, you're all familiar with that. Again, toll free can have long distance comp or international components to it. Um, and then uh, I'm going to mention this thing called ancillary feature. So aside from the core features, we have ancillary services as well. And ancillary is the catch-all type of a plan that means anything that somebody pays something for um, or they're getting for free and they're going to have to pay for it or they're paying for it now, but they'll get it for free if you switch plans. Um, you could, if, if it's outside the core services, you can create a plan and apply one or more of these. And it's very generic. It's kind of like the quantum unit of, of plans. So um, it can have a monthly recurring cost. It could have a metered cost. It can have a, um, and you can specify it's per call, per minute, per message, per megabyte, per yard of, of toilet paper, you know, anything that you can think of to charge. Um, and then there's uh, allowances, and those allowances can be shared among a group, kind of like lines sometimes get a block of time uh, that can be shared. And then we have some subtypes here. Uh, data and internet is one of the most common ones, um, but it could be a conferencing service. It could be equipment like leasing uh, equipment or like for cellular, it could be those monthly uh, uh, device payments, you know, um, that they have a recurring cost on them. And uh, if it's voice and if it's data, then you can stick upload and download speeds on those circuits. And we have reports for reporting on things like data services. So I just wanted to give you a feel for um, those plans and of course, there is another set of plans for all of the cellular. And again, we have ancillaries, which could be things like handset insurance, um, visual voicemail maybe they pay for, um, all kinds of ancillary features. But the core features are your domestic data usage, which could be standalone, unlimited, or um, uh, a pool. 
um, data pools are the most common. Uh, messaging, which used to get charged quite a bit, but now everybody seems to have unlimited talk and text. But those talk and text uh, plans are still uh, services that are separate from, from data. Um, but an unlimited messaging or an unlimited voice plan is, you know, very, very simple to, uh, to model. Um, we have international data roaming um, and international messaging when you text somebody out Side of the country or while you're roaming, and then the international voice, so long distance to other countries or roaming in other countries. So um, those are the core cellular uh, types of plans. And uh, you can see that if we go into a data plan, it talks about like whether there's rollover, like does the unused data get to roll over for the next month? Does it share with other users? What is the allowance that the, they have? And what's the overage rate and so on and so forth? So um, lots of details in these plans, but they're all very intuitive. So, um, okay. So what we found was that we could use these um, uh, plans and do contingency cost savings. And I'm just gonna show you a couple of reports just to give you a sense of here's a historical cellular spend profile where we take out the monthly noise from equipment purchases and stuff because that doesn't really affect their ongoing costs. And just looking at this graph, um, you can kind of take a guess as to where the, the blue squares are what their monthly recurring costs were, and then the average per device, and then uh, what they were, and you can pretty much guess where we came in and put in our you know, uh, savings uh, implementation, right? So they went from 16,000 to 17,000 down to 10,000 per month, right? And uh, this is just one example of how we can look at um, a high level accounting perspective of, of, you know, what we did with their spending over time. There are a lot of reports for analysis. Um, let me take you to, a, uh, I guess I'll do, I'll follow the agenda for a change. How about that? Um, okay, so once we had all this information, so we gather information about um, their inventory, their accounts, their plans, we bring in usages, and I guess I'll go ahead and uh, since I, I want to make sure I get through a few things. One of the capabilities of bringing data in, which is a concern because the plans, um, you know, can be uh, the, uh, the, one of the most tedious elements of plans. But plans are, are good in that they only need to be set up like one time. And once you take a plan and say, okay, this line has this local plan on it, you don't have to change that every month. It's there in TAMS, and TAMS knows, okay, this plan is on this line, and I'll treat it indefinite until you tell me otherwise. So every time we have a change in TAMS, it has what's called, an, I'll just go over here and show you, there's an effective date. So in November of 2011, it was on this plan. It switched over to this other plan on the same account with the same provider. Um, and it's been that way since 2012. So the, the plans were put in here once um, with a baseline where they were paying 28 cents per minute in state and 5.8 cents minute interstate. And then they switched and now it's 8 cents and 5.8. So there can also be discounts that are uh, additionally applied and those discounts can be, be tracked under a on the account level. So like here's here's some 45%, 45%, 36% discounts. And that would apply to every line that's in that in that account. So um, so getting the inventory is particularly on landlines, that's like a one and done type of a proposition. Sure, it can change some lines can get added or removed or they might open a new location or whatever, but it's fairly static. Cellular is a little more dynamic, but again, um, if you import, if you start off with 500 cell phones uh, at the end of the year, if they're at 550 or something like that, it, the bulk of the work was still already done on the very first month. Um, what does change every month is usage. So we have these things called scripts that will allow us to take supplier invoices or reports, like device reports from 
wireless or invoices from Verizon wireless or AT&T wireless. We've got like, I don't know, 160 different scripts because of all the different carriers. And we can take a script like here's a PDF of an invoice. So there's a PDF. Now it's not a, a scanned version, it's a downloaded version. So there's a, there's a PDF. And I can take this script and I'm just going to show you the manual. There's a couple of different ways of running, but the, the most the most manual way is to run a shortcut. And I say, here's the input file. I want to pull out all of the phone numbers. And it has a couple of options that tell it, do I want usage? Do I want inventory? Whatever. Don't worry about that. They're all very common and you'll get familiar with them. But if I uh, click that, what it does is it runs and it creates, um, it gives me a little window of that it's done. And it created this um, MTM file right here, 235 today. So if I open that, um, it's just a CSV file. All of our I.O. to the tool is an open architecture, so it's not proprietary. It's just a common delimited file. But you notice it has a lot of information here, phone number, usernames, cost centers, uh, and plans that are being billed. So if I want to then import that into TAMS, I can come to, um, let's just say this new client that we have, and I'm gonna come into their headquarters, and I'm gonna come in to add cell devices, and I'm gonna import those, and here's my demo database, a demo of plans, and I just added 124 cell phones into TAMS with this information about the username, the cost centers for cost accounting, and what plans each phone is on. So that's way better than sitting there typing in 124 phone numbers and so forth. But it's all from the scripting, right? The longest pull in the tent here is to go log on to the Verizon site and download the PDF, okay? Now I can also run that same script on that same invoice and bring in usage data. So I'll go show you an off cellular account client. Oh, and by the way, these scripts, we can create a batch file, and that's what I was talking to you, Greg, about, was that I couldn't run a batch file in your environment, but they'll get that fixed, I'm sure. Um, so that in the batch file, I can have, you know, sometimes Verizon Wireless has like, that you can only have one share pool per account. So we had clients that were getting like 20 PDF invoices every month because they had, you know, enough phones to where, you know, you, if you can only put 25 devices or 50 devices and you have 500 total, you've got to have like 10 accounts to carry all those devices around. Well, you can put those all in a sub-account sub structure and just create a batch file and run them all at once. So, you, you know, again, the lo longest amount of time is logging in and downloading 10 PDFs every month um, or 15 or 20, whatever the size of the client is. Okay. So, um, on a cellular account, what are we going to do? We're going to um, bring in data, and um, let me take a look here. Uh, I want to look at this one, 522. So this is the most recent from 2014, and so th there may be some voice polls or something on there. Yeah, these were voice polls, but you'll see how it doesn't really matter. So we can import all of this uh, usage voice usage, and this is actually relevant, even though they're not billing domestically for your voice usage, if you're um, going to be managing somebody's travel to another country, you might wanna know, do they use three minutes a month or 3,000 minutes a month, right? Or if, do they use one gigabyte or 10 gigabyte per month? Their behavior of data usage and all will, will, will convey to those foreign travel for a week or two. It might be a little different, but it's better than shooting blind, you know. So we can get information about their uh, different usages, domestic usage, um, of course, how much of a pool. You'll, you'll see some reports here in just a second. But at the end of it, so all of this in, data is imported. So you don't have to type in any of this stuff. The scripts grab it. And then we import it, just like we did with the phone numbers. But this is something you do every month for a, for a client account. And then what's nice about TAMS is that it puts all the pieces together. 
from monthly recurring costs and usages and overages and travel, uh, long distance calling and roaming, roaming calling and all the minutes and everything. And it creates, this is what they were billed by the supplier for each phone. And this is what we actually think they should have been billed based on TAMS's calculations. And if they're green, they're within 1% accuracy, right? Um, and you'll see that these are pretty much green all the way down. There's a few yellows, which would be between one and I think 3% or something. Uh, you can set your own thresholds. Um, but bottom line is on a $4,300 phone bill for this one account for this one month, you know, it's only off by $20 and those are going to be taxes. Now, there's analytics that allow you, uh, and there's lots of analytics. Again, it's not a training session, but I just want you to think about some of the uh, uh, some of the things that it can do for us. So for example, let's say I group this and you notice I just kind of drag some headings around and I can click and sort like it's kind of like a spreadsheet on steroids. Um, you'll see that I can sort uh, by just clicking a header. I can group and subgroup just by dragging and dropping. These are very common throughout the tool. But I could take a look at this guy here. This was real data. They had $54 in messaging charges on this one phone. Well, because we gather the usage every month, I can go back and say, well, let's go see what they what they had for the prior, um, let's see, about four, five, 23, you know, three or four months before this billing cycle, and it'll generate a report that shows me, oh, their, their usage was fine for a thousand message plan, but then they shot up to, uh, you know, 1377. Well, by making a plan change, of course, we can, uh, um, you know, lower those costs. We can even get a refund. We Many times, you know, we would ask uh, Verizon, say, hey, we noticed this shot up. Can you credit the, you know, like retro make that plan change a month ago? And many times they give us anywhere from all of the overage charges to at least 50%. So, um, but we can find these needles in the haystack very easily through this kind of interaction. We also have reports that are analysis reports. And these analysis reports range in uh, um, from things like, show me the devices that have not had any usage for the last three months or two months or whatever your criteria is. We And I'll show you just some pre canned reports. So here's some cellular. Uh, let's say here is um, their shared data usage versus their allowances. That's probably one of the more relevant reports. Um, and these reports, by the way, are exportable from the tool into a format that we also provide you with a free redistributable tool to give to your clients. They can open up these reports and navigate them. They can export them to Word, Excel, um, PDFs, um, whatever. So there's a lot of export options for these reports. But you'll notice that this is their usage and this is their allowance and you can page through here to see multiple. And we were managing this account so you can see how we uh, would be able to increase or decrease the uh, the pool allowances kind of as we, you know, each month as we track it. Um, we have, um, uh, I'm not going to spend too many more, but I do want you to see that when it comes to um, things, one of the later capabilities that we were selling to a client was um, this thing, like they had troubles looking at all of their data of their spend levels by supplier and by account and so forth. So we created a report. Again, all this data was in there. It was just a matter of reporting on it. So that we could take a given month and create what was called a cellular invoice review report. And if they had multiple accounts with Verizon, <clears throat> we would send them, and we could actually get these costs to match to the penny. So that even though they had uh, like six accounts with Verizon, they could write one check, <coughs> excuse me, and they could send that, and then there were uh, they could take those same costs and apportion them by cost centers. Um, so the cost accounting component, even though some of these cost centers would be scattered across different accounts, we could just take our reporting and, and summarize it by cost center or by uh, account number. 
Um, and then there was details down in here, which was help them with their kind of their uh, business intelligence so that they could see who's costing us the most. And there's some thresholds as to when things get highlighted, but they could find out that, hey, well, how come this uh, guy was costing so much uh, um, or like when it gets into the data usage is where you really see some egregious um, users that somebody like this again is a five-year-old account but it will call out those that are uh, egregious users and they might go to them and say well why are you using 40 gigabyte of data every month and it might be legitimate it might not be but having a report that allows them to uh, this can of course be exported to Excel so we found that we can work very closely that the um, accounts payable department really appreciated the ability for us to give them information that even the billion dollar carriers couldn't give them. Okay, so um, so what we found was that we could do things like project services um, that used much of the same information. And um, I'll show you like this landline client. Uh, we can put in here an hourly rate and we can bill. Uh, you can track for billable and non-billable time. You'll notice that our, uh, when it comes to the contingency fee service agreements, there are um, parameters that you can put in here for 36 months or 50% or 40% or, or whatever your agreement is with the client. Of course, you can also bill in different currencies. Um, and then you can generate your service agreement right out of TAMS. I talked about those uh, form letters. We have a whole series of form letters, such as from the sales side, you know, um, if you have a, a, a service agreement that you want to generate for a client given a certain set of, 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 of billing parameters, I'm sorry, it came up over on my other screen. There it is. Um, that you can just generate a service agreement, and this can have logos or whatever you want on, completely customized. Um, but these these numbers, let's say 50% for two years, those are captured as defaults when you're making optimization changes in TAMS. And it knows when you are um, billing for a um, uh, in, uh, invoice, I guess I, that's just the invoice review, um, the savings, will be will start when you make them effective and they will automatically stop billing for savings whenever they expire based off of those parameters in the service agreement so the service agreement and the billing are tied end to end it's a life cycle system um there's correspondence for thank yous you could even um uh create your own letters so for example uh, one of the value add uh, capabilities, we'd start off usually with contingency. They'd add on services like their data networking, maybe start with their cellular, end up with their landline. But then they would come back and say, well, what about ads, moves, and changes? Because you guys get us all set up. And um, uh, and then we turn around and add uh, employees, and we kind of screw up the mix, and our costs go up again. And we're tired of, of guessing what the right plan and right account and all that is. So can you guys just take care of that for us? And we had managed services. So managed services, for example, we would bill based off of what type of device they had, uh, and whether we had them under uh, our contingency uh, configuration already, because we already had the, all of their inventory and all their accounts and access to them and everything. There's no reason for us to charge them a setup fee. You know, we already have them set up. If it was a brand new client and they just wanted to be in services, then you know we wouldn't waive those fees or whatnot, and maybe not discount the rate. But these were the types of um, things that we found were value added to the data that we already had under our system, but that we could do managed services, usually cellular, travel requests, outages, whatnot. On landline, it would be uh, hourly services. So here's you know an hourly rate. And how did we handle that? Well, a couple different ways. One is, is that we have this capability called journaling. And we could open up trouble tickets, they could be billing tickets or whatnot, and they were not billable um, because we were following up on contingency type activities. Um, or if it was a project service, such as, oh, we're gonna open up a new location or we're moving from you know this, part of town to another part of town. We acquired another company. We need to merge all, all of our accounts and, and put a gateway between our data networks. 
then we would put together maybe a um, like a, uh, uh, a a letter of engagement with estimates of deliverables and timelines and 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 so forth. But then we could track our time in here. Um, that would we would add uh, an item. Of course, it knows who I am logged into Tams, and um, it uh, I could have a general title, um, uh, move lines or whatever. Just a, and um, I could give it a reference number. I could put in notes, um, uh, you know, something like dot quotes from from uh, Verizon. And I can uh, maybe it took me maybe it took me half an hour, and this is a billable activity. So later on another day, I can come in and add history to it, and then review contract or something. Okay, and then maybe that may, took me um, seventy uh, three quarter forty five minutes or something. So and I can put as much or as little detail in here as I want, and you'll notice that it. Uh, accumulates the time. We can do this on any account, across any client, for any service. And then when we come in and we can invoice for the unbilled time um, through this invoicing, and I can generate an invoice um, for that activity. And here's the invoice where it shows an hourly rate and the time that's accrued and so forth. And these are, you can have your own, it's like white label, you'll have your own logo on there, on your, of course, your company name. And, uh, and if I accept that, then what it does is it's going to mark those um, uh, activities on that, oh, I'm on the wrong account, um, on the, uh, I forget which account I was on here, this one, um, that those activities are now uh, marked as invoiced. So I just wanted you to be aware of, of that uh, capability. All right, so um, we're coming up 10 minutes before, so I uh, so talked about project services, being able to bill hourly, um, manage services. Um, maybe we'll leave the help desk for a later date. It's a web-based um, help desk, although you could use the journal which is what we used before we had the help desk. The help desk is just a really nice web base where they can submit trouble tickets or requests for travel or new equipment and whatever. And, uh, and so we can then track time on the help desk, but we can bill from TAM. So they kind of integrate, there's an integration between, or at least an interface between the help desk, uh, um, hourly tracking and, um, and of course, it corresponds via email back and forth to the client. They can log in and see their own status of all of their trouble tickets and whatnot. So, um, but it all stems from being having the, all of this information at your fingertips. You know, if I um, want to find anything out about a number, any phone number on any account, I can just put in uh, a phone number in TAMS and it'll take me right to that client, right to that location, and I immediately know who has the local toll and the long distance and so forth. So it's um, uh, everything's at your fingertips. Why not leverage it for other things like project services or managed services? Um, I already went through the client info topology about locations and suppliers, accounts, and lines. Um, I mentioned that the life cycle uh, management uh, that we have the contractual parameters and a service agreement um, and that those flow into things like invoices, analysis reports, form letters, requests for quotes. There's a, a ton of different reports. I will show a few things just because I, I'm going to show off a little bit of what the um, capabilities are in the reporting arena. Um, so for example, we bring in all this detail. Um, not just for billing savings, but it gives us fidelity and insight that uh, allows us to find savings and 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 track savings. So, for example, um, uh, let's see, we have one here called um, well, these are spend level. Here's data circuit inventory. Um, this just gives you a sense of what data circuit reports look like for IT people. They love this stuff when they can see all of their data circuits and what their speeds are on a per location basis, like including Mexico and whatnot. Um, who, who are the services circuits with, um, whether the circuit IDs and so forth. So uh, that's something the IT people really uh, appreciated. Um, I'm going to show you. You know, I was talking about running the script to pull out 
inventory or usages from Verizon Wireless. Well, we do the same thing with uh, landlines. And I'm going to show you something that we have. This is an AT&T account that's got a lot of different things on it. And I'm just going to, I don't want to duplicate this May 1st in, in, invoice, so I'm just going to pretend it comes in a day early. And I'm going to do a mixed mode import. Um, I'm sorry, 430. The reason I'm doing this is I want you to see what the value of bringing in details is. So this account has two import files, one for inbound long distance and one for outbound, uh, I'm sorry, inbound toll free and one for outbound long distance. So the script, we download the report from AT&T, we run the script like I showed you for Verizon, and then it, it formats the call records for import into Teams. Now, if it finds call records that are for some reason not the cost that it expects, it flags them and says, hey, what's going on here? Like it's in the billing year, we found, we found phone numbers billing on accounts they didn't belong on. We have many times found them billing the wrong rates. Um, and so instead of manually looking through these bills and trying to find this stuff out, just importing the call records and by virtue of TAMs knowing what the per minute rate is supposed to be, it can tell based on the duration and the call location how much was that call supposed to cost. Now these were an anomaly. There were about uh, you know seven records here that had um, zero duration and zero cost. Don't know how that happened. I'm just going to skip them. Okay, and I'm going to accept these other records, and there was uh, 522 of them. And then I'm going to come in, and I'm going to import the outbound long distance. And it's going to run through and check every one of these records. And there was like 80, 800 uh, records, and some of them were invalid. And I can do things like with my, uh, again, with my uh, um, uh these grids, I can drag and drop things around and find out that where the bulk of them are, I can sort by cost delta and whatnot, and find out that it actually I, I chose this particular cycle to demonstrate um, some of the capabilities. Uh, like this says, here's what the actual cost was for these calls, but here's what we think it should have cost, and, and I can sort these from highest to lowest or lowest to highest. I can group as many times as I want. Um, so this allows me to go look at something. Why did this cost, um, you know, it, we, it was 99 cents when we thought it should have been 59 cents. Um, so just to let you know that out of the thousands of call records that it, it validated, it found some that were invalid. It turns out you find one problem with the billing, you call and you get it fixed, get a credit, and all of a sudden out of the 700 invalid ones, 500 of them are resolved already. Um, you might get it down to where you only have two or three, or they could be all valid. But um, what do we do once we import all these call records? Well, we can do all kinds of things. First of all, we can verify that their cost of their bill is accurate. And you'll notice that we come, uh, the supplier billed 11251 and we, uh, TAMS, came up with uh, 11177 so there's a uh, $80 discrepancy on an $11,000 bill, and you'll probably find those are mostly tax related, although we do know that some of those call records were, were off also. Um, but we can do many other things with this fidelity. One of them is we can say, what are they spending their money on? What's the most expensive route? And so it can generate a report very, very quickly. <laughs> And we can say, well, here's the ones that are the, the remote phone numbers that are costing them the most. And I'm just going to take a look at this one. And I can drill down. We have the ability, they're like layered reports. So you can start with a high-level summary and then drill down into, you know, the itsy-bitsy details. But we can find out that this phone number that uh, had this remote call, well, if I do a search on that, I can find out that, hey, that's, Muscle Shoals, which is one of their locations in Alabama. Okay, and who who uh, who called them? Well, here's a phone number that happens to also be one of their places in St. Charles, Missouri. And what's happening is they're calling themselves, even though they have voice over their MPLS network. So if we reconfigure them to make those on-net calls, they'll save a lot of money, right? So the insights, and in fact, we actually have a report 
um, that's called an interlocation calling. The only reason we can do this is because we bring in all of the details of the call records, and I can say how much does this company spend? I'm just going to do like two months here. On average, how many minutes? And I can do it by account or cumulative across all accounts. How much? And here's a cross tab table showing the average number of minutes from location to location. Now, there may be a cost of putting in VoIP from one location to another, and so we can look at that and go, well, based on a penny a minute, at 10, 1,000 minutes a month, you're only going to save $10.65. The ROI is about 15 years. Okay, it's not worth doing, you know. Um, or you'll find otherwise that it's much worth it. So having the details of these calls allows you to do analysis that you could never do. And, of course, I can bring in that usage in detail much faster than you could even type in the aggregate numbers of usage into a spreadsheet. Um, Three straight up three o'clock. I wanted to really cover one more thing, um, and I will pause and ask if if you want me to keep going. I would say five more minutes, and I should be able to conclude. I think that would be great, Chris. Okay, so um, so you know what I wanted to go over was this thing because I've talked about different dimensions of the business. But one of the things I learned over time um, as I grew the business and had a lot of people working on a lot of different clients, many uh, clients had multiple people involved and I would have uh, maybe somebody new download invoices because that would be like the longest you know time it would take to do something and run a script, um, is this concept that we've incorporated called this scheduler. And uh, it, it's really, you're going to see five-year-old uh, action items on here, okay? But um, basically, uh, any any person can come in and see, and as a, as a manager, I can see across everybody. And again, it's a grid, so I can uh, group and, and sort, you know, however I want. Um, but um, let's just take this ACME um uh, Acme Industries here, and here's the task that we had on a monthly recurring basis. Now, or let's just say a recurring basis. They can be just like in Outlook or any other you know CRM tool. You can set up tasks as one-time tasks, recurring tasks. Um, they can be a, whatever a current recurrence you want. We would set recurring a uh, task reminders for things as far out as two or three years later. Let me see here um, that would have a contract end date coming up. And a lot of, uh, particularly landline companies, have these evergreen clauses where if you don't explicitly cancel, it'll automatically renew for another three-year term. So we could set up reminders for when their contract was going to end, get it like 90 days out, make sure we submitted a non-renewal letter, which is a form letter, to prevent them from auto renewing and then go in and negotiate and of course this renewal letter can be worded however you want we usually said that we want to speak to the account rep and get competitive pricing because we're you know we're, you know considering other uh, solutions yada 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 right um but not having the reminder is the key if you don't have a reminder and you miss that deadline you miss the opportunity so we would set reminders out three years in advance or whatever we other reminders were for um the monthly recurring activities of invoicing for savings. And then there were reminders for, um, hey, when is our contract with the client uh, ending? So when we generate a service agreement, you could automatically, the salesperson would set a reminder to follow up and, and say, well, what about these other services? Or maybe you want to transition to managed services or whatever. Um, so we grew our relationships. We didn't just have two years and done with our clients. We would have 10-year relationships with our clients. And as they grew, we grew. Um, so the, the, the last point about these uh, scheduled tasks, though, is that um, you can set them up, you can reassign them if people go on vacation, um, somebody else can, can, can be assigned those tasks. Um, but here's the other thing is that there's this concept of a workflow. Um, and um, let's see, where do I have it? The spawn tasks. So there were certain activities where I would have two or three people 
I wouldn't go too deep, but two or three people where a, a tech would download the bills and run the scripts, they would mark their task complete. And when they mark that task complete, I'm going to open up this uh, particular task just to again give you the visual of what it looks like. Um, I'll open the series. Um, when they mark this complete, uh, so you can be in progress, whatever, complete, then what it does is it can spawn one or more tasks. So usually it would be just one. Every once in a while we found it useful to have like, okay, this gets done, it triggers two more things. Um, and then that would go to somebody perhaps else. And I can open that up. And it would um, be, hey, you need to do something post audit, okay, and uh, on some billing credit or whatever. And by the way, that task can spawn, you could go a third layer, indefinite number of, you know, it can go on f forever. But uh, we would usually do two, uh, uh, one, one spawn task and, and um, one layer deep. But sometimes we found it useful to do two, uh, a second layer or maybe spawn two separate tasks. Um, so this allows that somebody's not checking something when it's not on their plate. And as soon as they, this person would, would mark this as complete, then Bill Smith, it would show up. It wouldn't be on his task list until it spawned onto the, it's ready. So uh, his prerequisites were fulfilled and he was able to, to, to do his task. So that can be anything. You can even create your own. They don't have to be tied. Like these are tied. It's inner, inner, you know, related. So I can navigate between um, my, uh, uh, the account that the, this is related to. And, and I can go back to, I can add ta as many tasks I want for this account, or I can have this monthly recurring for the audit. And so when I'm on the account, I can go back and open up the task. So I can navigate back and forth between the task and the uh, either the supplier uh, account or whatever that it's related to. So to me, managing lots of things, everybody could walk in every day and see exactly what's due today, what's on their plate, and just you know check it off as they went. Of course, I could also keep track of things like um, there's a due date on here. Um, but there's also other fields that uh, are hidden, and this is just like you know all of the Windows stuff. This is um, we're a Microsoft partner, so you can look at date completed and find out hey if somebody's not getting their work done on time. If you, you know if you're monitoring things uh, that that closely, um, and and you know you can there's there's more information available than just the standard view here. And of course these come in in um you know uh daily calendar views, work week views, uh monthly views and so forth. So you can um uh look ahead, you know, this is just like every other uh task manager that you've probably seen. So that was all I wanted to cover on the task manager because it um does affect when you have a group of people all you know spread across lots of different accounts and, and clients how to manage those which when you're one guy plumbing you, you know it's not really an issue you it's all on your plate you know so um i think that covers off on um the journaling i mentioned the scheduler um the supplier plans we talked about that being the most um you know manual process data importing for cellular um and uh, auditing, reconciling, reconciling the reporting, um, and then landline, of course, some of the things. Oh, one last thing uh, I mentioned um, about some of the tools that help you with the plans. Since you asked, I thought I'd uh, just show you this real quick. I can take the same call detail records that we import, and I can run them through this um, uh, regression program that will group them all by state and uh, um, local and long distance and in-state and out-of-state and determine from the call records what is their per minute rate and give you a correlation coefficient of like 99.9 percent .9%, so you know with high confidence this is what they're actually being billed for and it just did that for that whole account across all of these different types of calls including international to other countries and everything so you know <laughs> if you don't have a if you do have a contract you can easily identify whether they're being billed what the contract says, but if you don't have a contract to work from, you can even reverse engineer from the call records within a few seconds. So um, that's it.
Thank you so much, Chris. Um, you know, you this has improved a lot since I was using it. So it's yeah. Fantastic. So. Um, yeah, this I, is really cool, Chris. <laughs> Well, I, I hope you, uh, obviously I covered a lot in one hour, right? And, um, you know, you'll, you'll realize that it seems, I mean, obviously there's a lot there, but, you know, if you take bite-sized pieces, you, you can eat the whole cow, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. The, probably the most, the, the most amazing uh, that I think is all of the reports that we have. It's just, like I said, 80 some reports with, um, they're grouped and they make sense, but uh, there's just a, a lot of reporting. And of course, um, it makes sense if you have all this data at your fingertips, uh, you want a, a, a wide array of audiences to be able to look at that information from their perspective. Um, out of curiosity, do you have, um have you developed anything kind of like a, a series of reports that you use as a sales tool to, if, if you're going out to visit a client to kind of show them? Um, I do. Okay. In fact, uh, let's see here. Um, we, I, you can export them to PDF, you know, uh, okay. let's see here. Samples reports. So I okay. have my sales guy had a sample of t actually 10. I expanded it to 13, okay. but 10 cellular, and 10 landline reports um, that he would put in PDF and, and have the ability to just, you know, he knew how to generate them as well, but right. he would just, you know, have them in PDF. And then he could go through, and maybe not all 10 or 20 of them, right. but they would uh, invariably ask about three or four of them. And, you know, it's like we can predict, oh, yeah, you're, everybody wants to see this one, you know. Um, so, yeah, we had those sample reports. Um, and, of course, I have them scrubbed of the real client names. And yeah, yeah. I just have my, my TSS logo and stuff. But, obviously, with Three Rivers Telecom Consulting, we have our own, you know, logo and brand on them. Right. Um, but those reports, you know, is that's something that's, I think, relevant is that, you um, uh, that the clients can, you know, I should show you, uh, let's see, do I have a, I would love to show a, uh, how about a spend level by location, um, location summary. Yeah. Uh, we had, um, some, some good ones. I could just generate one real quick. Um, an accounting report that is, uh, my cost of average current cost by cost center in line. So a lot of times, um, and we can just take a, a like a two month average as of uh, 2014 and generate that. Um, we would help with the year end. They'd always call up and say, hey, can you tell us how to budget for this stuff? So here's a report that I just generated, right? Using two months of average usage, across all accounts, all locations for a client. And if I want to see the details, so here's their main locations, and then I come in and I can drill down on the, this particular one, and all of a sudden now I see all of their local and toll and data services and conferencing and so forth. And then again, I can drill down if I want to see their toll costs on this particular line number and I can see their what they're paying per minute how many calls on average how many minutes and uh, all their international calling um, and what their total costs are so basically I can take a client that's across two countries and with two clicks of the mouse I can go um, down to a, an individual location and then the services on an individual line of an individual location and see all of their costs. So there's an enormous amount of information available at your fingertips that allows you, and I know, Greg, you've seen some of this before, but everybody else hadn't. So um, it's really, uh, a, executives want to see this level and bean counters or you know somebody uh, researching something in detail wants to see it at this level or maybe the intermediate level. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and all of these are exportable, and you can save them as RPT files. And then the free report viewer, you just send the RPT file over to the to the uh, customer, and they can drill down and export and do whatever they want until their heart's content. And that's that's included, you know. Yeah. 
That's great. I'm, um, you know, it, like I said, it's, it's developed much more than, than the last time I was using it. And oh, yeah. um, I'm really excited. Um, I do have a, a question for you. I, no one else really needs to hear this. It's just a question about the, the Microsoft 365. And we, we can do that offline if you don't mind. But, um, or, or we can do it right now. It's not private information. It's just. Well, maybe if there's anybody, anything else before you let them go, that, that we, I mean, I'm, I'm at your disposal. Questions, anybody? I unfortunately have to take off. This has been so cool, but I, I, have, a, I have a lot of stuff that I would love to review, but I, I have to go to a, another job right now. Um, sure. But I just really wanted to say thank you for the training. This was really useful. Yeah, well, there will be training. This was just, I wanted to introduce the capabilities and some of the dimensions of the business model. So I'm glad you enjoyed it, but there'll be, you know, more support to come um, and, and Wonderful. training. So. Yeah. All right. Any, anybody else yeah, have any you, questions or comments? I, I think it looks really good, Chris. Um, I, I like the integration of it, especially the sales aspect of it. Um, you know, being able to generate a proposal and customize the the terms and the fees. I think it's I think it's going to be very good. It looks great. Thank you. Yeah. And you may notice, yes, that in that respect, that you can have one set of, let's say you pay, I don't know what your guy's standard is, but for us it was 50% savings for two years. But sometimes we had clients that, you know, they were really big and we might do 40% for three years or something like that, you know. Um, but we allow for now you can charge one contingency fee for landline services and a different contingency fee for, for cellular. So those are, um, flexibilities and of course a single hourly rate um, there's limits to what it can do and can't do but uh we found it satisfied our needs almost every time yeah I, I like the integration it's very nice thank you thanks 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 chris yeah, okay thank you. uh and i'll just ask well can we just let me ask you right now about the microsoft thing so basically there um apps for rent is going to be installing it on the server on the virtual server that, that yes. User. Okay. So then we're still going to need uh, service on our individual computers or desktop computers. Is that set, a yep. separate? Or do we use the same license? On we use desktop? the same license. I okay. have like one license and it's active on my desktop and on uh, actually two desktops and a tablet that I have. Okay. So it's the same login credentials for that one license. And I think you, I'm pretty sure you get up to five platforms and you can even like go in and manage there's a management an admin portal for those okay. licenses and you can deactivate one license and activate it on somebody else you know uh, it'll show you okay you have five seats available here's four users you have one more remaining and these four users have these you know uh, nine different devices <laughs> you know it's yeah okay. well it's similar to what we have today except it's much it's much more um, flexible and it sounds like it offers more more um, yeah well and the thing is there are certain licenses that are not valid in hosted environments and it makes sense because if somebody buys a, a single workstation thing you don't want them to host that and then everybody in the world get to use it right right so they have these hosted uh, through through Citrix slash terminal services they're called e3 licenses which are for um, uh, enterprise uh, whatever terminal services or something environments. Okay. Um, but if you have a license and you can activate it on your, on your, then it's valid. It won't activate if it's not valid. <laughs> so, um, yeah. and you know, you just go in and sign in at the top, like I have up here, you know. Now, once okay. you sign in, you can uh, tell it to um, stay signed in on this device so that every day when you log in, you don't have to keep signing in to Word or something like that. Okay. You know, it's just, yeah, right. it, it remembers you. All right. So, yeah, and so they're installing that later today. Um, okay. That, you know, probably, well, certainly by tomorrow it'll be up and running for, for all of us. So, um, and so, so anyway, thank you so much, Chris. And then, you know, let me know when, um, when you've got it up and going and, yeah. you know, yeah. we can schedule a training session. What, what we were going to do is start right. with a couple of really small existing clients. And, yeah. Um, just to you know, get everybody's feet wet and, and take that 